Howdy, Larkin Rose here. Time for the Daily Rant. So yesterday there was a debate going on between a mercenary of the state. Um, I don't know if he was Navy or Army or what the heck he was, um, but he was getting all whiny about somebody mocking the troops. Um, oh, because somebody had posted my video. Oh, it started with the thing about the, the American sniper and how he's a cowardly bastard. Um, and then somebody posted my thing, thank the troops for what, my YouTube video called that. And so the discussion's going back and forth and it's getting all interested and interesting and heated and fun stuff. And then along comes some mercenary named Chad, who is active duty mercenary. And so he's arguing with other people um, before I get in on it. And he's, so along the way he says, I'm a free thinker, I'm not indoctrinated. And, and I'm a man of integrity. <laughs> so, okay, I can't wait to hear this. And then he says, and this is all almost a verbatim quote, a man of integrity is one who obeys orders he's agreed to obey, even if he disagrees with those orders. And I was in rather a pugnacious mood and I just frickin' flattened him for that and said, you stupid frickin' Nazi. You just took pride in the fact that you will do the wrong thing when you're told to. You'll hear an order and think, wow, that doesn't seem right to me, but I have integrity. So I'm going to do the wrong frickin' thing because somebody told me to. And so me and somebody else started referring to him as a Nazi. Like, great, that's the exact attitude of the Nazis. How could you compare me to a Nazi? And the fact that he didn't even understand why we were saying that. And so I brought up, well, you know, if a man of integrity obeys orders that he disagrees with, um, then I guess you think the verdict in the Nuremberg trials was bogus because they said, yeah, the fact that you were told to do evil crap doesn't really make it okay that you did evil crap. The just following orders excuse doesn't really fly, not really good enough, sorry. And he was arguing exactly that, that it's gr not even just, it's justifiable, but it's integrity and it's noble and you should be proud of the fact that you did the wrong freaking thing because somebody ordered you to. Now, it's not that surprising that a state mercenary says something stupid like that. Um, but it's one of those things where the what's impressive is that he was honest enough to say it. What's noteworthy is not that he actually thought that because everybody in the military has to think that. And it's one of those, you know, things that, that often comes up when debating statists is they all have to believe a, a set of completely insane things, but most of them are uncomfortable stating them. So they hem and haw and they, they dance around in circles and they avoid questions and they dodge and they evade and they complain and they whine about your question and then they run away. Um, but logically, to be a statist at all, you have to believe certain insane things. And most of the time people don't wanna say out loud those insane things. They don't want to precisely and specifically and honestly describe what they believe because then it sounds as loony as it is. So every soldier who takes pride in obedience and I do as I'm told and I salute and I march around when I'm told to has to believe that. They have to believe that there is nobility and virtue and that it's awesome to obey orders just because they were orders. And most of them don't like the problem is that they don't have the honesty to admit that they actually believe that when your commanding officer says that's an order and you say yes sir and you do whatever he told you to do that makes you so cool and awesome instead of making you an idiot coward and the biggest threat humanity has ever known which is what it actually makes you but it's the whole mentality in the military, the, the hierarchy and the, you know, boot camp training you not to be an individual and I'm a, you know, I'm a machine and I'm a, and you know, they use these, these terms about themselves and that, you know, we're, we're ready to charge into battle and we're, we'll obey the orders and do as we're told and go carry out the mission. And of course, it's never a mission that the individual said, you know, I think we should do this somebody else told them to and they take pride in the fact that they do as they're told i do what i'm told so well i don't think for a second about it 
I have no moral conscience. I have no freaking brain. I'm just a robot. And that makes me so awesome. And that's built into the military mentality. But they usually hide that. In fact, they have to hide it in the propaganda because most people, unlike this status bonehead I was just arguing with, most people would be ashamed to say it that bluntly. Yeah, I'll do the wrong thing if ordered to do so. And that makes me a man of integrity. No, it makes you an idiot. So they water it down and you get these, these twisted, contradictory paradoxes. Like in the military, they say, well, you, you're allowed to, in fact, you're supposed to disobey an unlawful order. Now, of course, if you do, you get in trouble. And number you know, one, if you did that, you would get in trouble too. Guess who gets to define lawful? The control freak parasites. So the, and the reality that everybody knows is if you disobey orders, you get in trouble. Um, and there are, of course, the horror stories of, you know, the massacre at, at Mile where there's a bunch of people were told to commit murder just mass murder of women and children and babies and just the most horrible thing you can imagine. And they were trained so much to think that I obey orders, whether I like it or not. And that makes me strong. No, it makes you an idiot, evil piece of crap, but they do it. And then there's like a couple people trying to talk them out of it and then trying to save the victims. And, um, was it a couple people or just one guy there who was trying to make them stop and couldn't. Um, imagine being that guy, like you dumbasses are doing evil crap and somewhere down inside, you know, it's evil. And yet you're taking pride in the fact that you're doing as you're told. And it, it really is, you know, that mentality is a, an amplifier of evil because whatever bad is in somebody if you're trained to believe that just following orders makes something okay and makes it righteous and you should be proud of it and wear a uniform and walk around and goose step around like a fascist because that means you're awesome. If you have that mentality and inside you, you have any evil, which is like everybody <laughs> to one degree or another, it's basically permission for you to act out the most vicious, sadistic, hostile, malicious, evil crap you can imagine and blame it on. I was just following orders. And you can see that in what soldiers do, in what cops do, in what lots of people in positions of authority do, where often, and I talk about this in the most dangerous superstition, Often they're ordered to do evil and they end up doing evil even beyond what they were ordered to do because the belief in authority sort of, it's the belief in never mind your conscience, like your evil there, your helplessness, your anger, your frustration, you know, all the negative stuff built inside you from, you know, whatever basically gets unleashed when authority says, never mind your conscience. That's the enemy. Go kill him. And because your conscience is still there in some back corner, people like overreact and do this weird, creepy backlash of suddenly becoming completely sadistic and evil. And, and so it isn't, they're not even just mindless robots. Like that would be bad enough. They're worse than mindless robots. And then they do evil crap beyond what they were told to do. And I still remember, you know, this was back when I was a statist. Um, but I remember reading Heart of Darkness, um, the Joseph Conrad novel. Uh, it's uh, the Apocalypse Now, the movie, is based on that, although they moved it. You know, the, the novel takes place in Afri Africa, and Heart of Darkness is uh, Vietnam. I assume it's Vietnam. Um, and that story, there's Colonel Kurtz, the guy who completely lost his marbles and just turned into this sadistic, murdering little psycho control freak. And he gives this weird ass creepy speech. And I hardly remember any of the details of it. Um, but I remember first reading it and thinking, that's really creepy because this totally makes sense to me. And it isn't at all, it wasn't at all that I thought the guy was right. You know, it's the dif difference between empathy and sympathy. 
is you're totally wrong. What you're saying is totally evil, but I totally see how somebody trained into the military mindset would have that attitude because it perfectly follows from what you were taught to believe. And he talks about, you know, the Colonel Kurtz and his creepy thing is like, well, we went to some village to inoculate the kids from some disease and the Viet Cong or whoever the enemy was, um, came and chopped off all the inoculated arms of the little children and there was a pile of arms and Colonel Kurtz is just saying that's brilliant that's so genius and that's what it takes to win a war and and his his speech goes on and on in the book um and Marlon Brando is him in the the uh um in the movie version and it creeped me out that I totally understood the whole, the whole speech and exactly what he was saying. This sadistic, psycho, murdering loony. Like, I could totally see how everything he said followed from the military mindset. And part of the, the message was, look, you send us out here to kill people and scare them into submission. Well, the way to do that is to be as ruthless and malicious and vicious and heinous and hostile and just evil and make the most horrible massacres imaginable to scare the crap out of your enemy. And if you've accepted the premise that following orders and inflicting evil is necessary for, you know, for some larger goal, like the ends justify the means, then it makes perfect sense to just become completely freaking evil and did you just do unspeakably heinous things because, hey, that works even better. And it always struck me as bizarre that there are rules of war. And, and I, I can never figure out whether that's a good sign or a completely insane sign to say, all right, a bunch of pawns are going to go to this place and kill each other for a long time. And people are going to get blown to smithereens. Body parts are going to be flying everywhere and horrible, unspeakable suffering and terror and just the most horrible things in the world, but there are rules. Like we don't do this and we don't do that. We commit mass murder. That's not one of the rules. You're allowed to commit mass murder, but we don't torture people except blowing them up. That doesn't count. You know, you blow pieces off of them and then they're lying in a battlefield in the mud in a puddle of their own blood with half of their body parts missing. That's perfectly fine. That's within the rules, but don't torture them. <laughs> like, how is that not torture? What the hell is wrong with you? And it struck me as so weird. And it, you go back farther in history and it gets even weirder. Like the Revolutionary War where the British were all offended and upset that, wait a minute, the, the people we're trying to violently oppress, they're shooting at the officers. How could you be so uncivilized? Wait, you're trying to kill us. You're trying to kill us and violently subjugate us and enslave us. And you get all upset that we're shooting at the guy in charge. And it shows how just twisted and bizarre and weird it is to think that authoritarian militarism or whatever you want to call it can be compatible with any set of moral rules. Like you're advocating trespass and destruction and vandalism and terrorism and murder, but we're going to do it within some rules. And so the speech in, in Apocalypse Now, or, or the speech in Heart of Darkness, the original in the book, just struck me as that totally logically follows from the completely evil premise of war, which is we're allowed to scare the crap out of people and terrorize people. It's for the common good. It's for freedom or democracy or something or other. And the enemy's really bad. So we have to do whatever it takes to beat the really bad enemy. And as it happens, what it takes to beat a really bad enemy is to be a really bad enemy and be completely evil. So Kurtz just loses his marbles and figures out, well, hey, if we're going to win, if that's the goal, then we need to be more evil and ruthless and heartless and psychotic than our enemy is because that's how you win and that's totally true if you accept the premise of government war that's totally true and so the you know so back to arguing with this agent of the state what was unusual and interesting is that he was that honest about taking pride in doing the wrong thing but of course that is fundamental to being a government soldier. I will follow orders. You know, but what's the point of an order? If it, if an or, if, if you're ordered to do something that you think is moral and a good idea, it didn't need to be an order. 
like, hey, bad guys are coming. You want to get up on that hill and take a sniper position and, you know, if they come this way, shoot them from there, you know, that doesn't have to be an order because you're like, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to go do that. And if the, like, the only thing you need orders for is something that people either think is a stupid idea or an immoral idea. Like, well, now there's a curfew and you're ordered to shoot anybody who walks down that road. Um, I know somebody personally, and I won't give too many details, who was in Vietnam and they were ordered to enforce a curfew by shooting anybody walking down the road after a certain point. I think I'm getting the details right. I've heard so many horror stories. Um, but this particular one, and a bunch of them just said, no, we're just, we're not gonna shoot somebody for walking down the road. Like, uh, little kids walking down the road. Well, our orders are, kill anybody who walks down that road past this time. No, we're just not gonna, that's just screwed up. And apparently this moron that I was debating not only would have shot anybody walking down the road, he would have taken pride in the fact that he went against his own moral code. Because that was, that was part of the equation. That was part was of what he described as a man of integrity, as somebody who follows orders, even if he doesn't agree with them. So like that's because ordering, uh, following an order you agree with and thought was a good idea. Like, where's the virtue in that? Like, well, that was a good idea. You didn't need to order me to do it. I would have done it anyway, even if you didn't. So like that can't be the measure of virtue is I did what I thought was a good idea because someone else told me it was a good idea too. So what? Like. There's no great sacrifice and virtue in doing what you would have done anyway. So what he's saying is literally he thinks there is great virtue and integrity in doing what you think is wrong. In being evil. He thinks it's good to be evil. And that is what the belief in authority makes people do. He literally takes pride in committing evil. He thinks it's good and noble and virtuous to do what he thinks is wrong and immoral and evil. That is insane. And that insanity is inherent to the belief in authority. It's one of the disproofs of authority. If an outside authority tells you to do A and you think B is the moral choice and A is immoral, the only two options are you have a moral obligation to do the wrong thing, which is just insane, or you have an obligation to ignore the authority, in which case it isn't authority. It doesn't, have the, it doesn't have the right to rule you. You don't have the obligation to obey. It's not authority anymore. To believe that it is actually authority requires you to believe that it is good to be bad. And here's this soldier bragging about the fact that he would do what he thinks is evil if ordered to do so. And he thinks it's a virtue. He thinks that means he's he has integrity. I think this is evil, but I'm so awesome, I'm gonna commit evil anyway, because somebody told me to. And it's just, it's so creepy. Uh, it, it's, it's cool, I like it when statists are that blunt and honest about what they actually believe, but it's also sort of creepy, the fact that he, he typed those words. A man of integrity is somebody who follows orders even if he disagrees with them. Holy crap, like you just described the cause of 99% of human suffering is stupid people doing what they're ordered when they know it's wrong. And he's wearing that as a badge of honor. And and that's necessary, it's it's essential, it's, it's inherent to the military mindset that it is somehow awesome to follow orders and to obey the hierarchy, the command hierarchy, even if you think this is a stupid idea or this is downright immoral. So they, so they throw out the mythology that, well, you, you're, you have the right to disobey an immoral order or an unlawful order, not even immoral. They, that's sort of not really there. But if it's unlawful, but you know, what the hell does that mean? Like unlawful is whatever the tyrants say it is. And if you disagree in unlawful order, you'll still get in trouble. And there are a lot of, you know, war movies, and then there's just the reality, you know, the, the personal testimonies of people who were in war who talk about how, wow, we just turned into freaking monsters, and people are surprised. Like, look what that soldier just said. He just said that he takes pride in turning off his own freaking conscience. And you wonder why people do evil crap when they're in the military. It's because 
the first thing they're taught, the last thing they're taught, everything in between they're taught, the most fundamental thing about being a soldier is ignore your own conscience. Do the wrong frickin' thing when authority tells you to, and then people are stunned that, wow, they did really evil stuff. Of course they did really evil stuff. They are agents of an evil state that orders them to do evil stuff and trains them to believe that it's virtuous to do evil stuff. And that is just screwed up. And it's why, no, I don't support the troops. The one action of any government soldier I will ever support is quitting. Otherwise, you're just a stupid frickin' agent of evil. And it's nice when they're, you know, accidentally honest enough to be that open about what they are. And this guy was bragging about being an agent of evil. I will do the wrong thing when told to do so, even when I know it's the wrong thing. Holy crap. That is what the U.S. troops are. It is what government troops always are. And for anybody to go rah, rah, rah for that is just screwed up.